we're going to talk about something called Raynaud's phenomenon today, a relatively common condition. Raynaud's is, is a condition where the body's extremities, typically fingers or toes, but can even be ears or nose or things like that, turn a triad of colors. And the pattern, the, the order is actually important, where it goes white, blue, and then red. You can see in the picture here that white color. And that color change is typically associated with some degree of pain, and it happens upon exposure to cold. It's important to note you don't need all three color changes, so it may just be white, but it can't just be, say, blue or, or red. The cold exposure can also be variable, so it can be what a lot of us may not consider that cold to what we would all consider cold and would feel uncomfortable in, but doesn't necessarily call, cause Raynaud's in all of us. And the other factor with all this is it typically does improve with warming. So worse on cold, better with warmth. Why does it happen? So in, not entirely, entirely clear for the ultimate underlying reason, but there is vasospasm of the blood vessels going to the extremities. Why that happens is less clear, but vasospasm meaning that blood vessels that are supposed to stay a certain size uh, will shift and go from bigger, smaller, 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 bigger. And when a blood vessel is smaller, it contracts, becomes smaller than it should be for a moment. So the cold makes that blood vessel spasm, make it go smaller, less blood flow is going to get through. And it's that less blood flow that causes the pain and causes the color change. As blood flow gets better upon warmth, then things improve back to normal. Now there's typically two types of Raynaud's phenomenon that we talk about. So there's primary Raynaud's, which is probably the type that is most common, and fortunately, relatively benign. So primary Raynaud's typically has an onset in folks when they are younger, so it could be teenage years, 20s, even 30s, women more often than men. And as I said, it's relatively benign, meaning that it doesn't typically cause other problems, it's not necessarily associated with other diseases, and has no concerning long-term consequences associated with it. Where we get more concerned and we always want to make sure we're not missing is secondary, secondary Raynaud's phenomenon. Secondary Raynaud's phenomenon can be associated with a number of different conditions, particularly conditions in rheumatology. So it can be associated with inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. Where we get more concerned and we don't want to miss is that it can be a manifestation of lupus, or diseases uh, that are like lupus, so something called mixed connective tissue disease, and can also be associated with scleroderma. And secondary Raynaud's is important to identify because it then allows you to correctly identify that primary condition. So if we find someone has lupus or scleroderma, it allows us to manage that primary condition properly, as well as the Raynaud's. And secondary Raynaud's also can result in more serious manifestations. So you can get open sores on the tips of the fingers, which can result in poor healing, and in really rare and serious cases can actually cause gangrene or amputation. And by identifying secondary Raynaud's early, hopefully we can do a much better job of preventing any of these things from happening. So how do we treat Raynaud? So most commonly, conservative measures are more than enough and do very well for the vast majority of people. So conservative measures meaning we keep our hands and feet warm, wearing appropriate uh, clothing over them, gloves, appropriately warm socks, uh, footwear, so forth. But also what we often forget is we don't want to just keep our hands and feet warm. We want to keep our core body warm. So the, the warmth around where our heart and lungs are, where their blood is ultimately centrally coming from, if it's warmer there, by the time it gets out to the hands and feet, it'll also be warmer, meaning the hands and feet don't need to work as hard to keep those areas warm. For a lot of people, this is enough. And then just being wise in terms of uh, trying to limit that cold exposure as, as possible and as necessary. For some though, that's not enough. And there's a variety of medication options, which in some folks works better than others, uh, to help 
improve that blood flow because we talked about how the blood vessels get smaller so there's medications that can help make that blood vessel go a little bit bigger so the blood flow is better into the hands and feet um, and that helps keep things warm as well. For more information on conditions related to Raynaud's phenomenon please check out our other videos and as always visit our website at albertarheumatology.com.